<laughs> well, let me say good morning and thank you for attending this conference on this morning. Prior to the killing of Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri, and afterwards, the United Christian Leadership Ministry and the Rochester Coalition for Police Reform held several meetings with Mayor Warren, City Council President Loretta Scott, and City Council Public Safety Committee Chairman Adam McFadden to explore ways of improving community police relations. Our conversations focused on an independent civilian review process with subpoena power and investigative authority, as well as body cameras. After the Ferguson Rebellion and the murders of persons of color in numerous cities in the United States by representatives of law enforcement and, in addition, conflicts with the Rochester Police Department concerning incidents of excessive force, particularly against city residents such as Brenda Hardaway, Benny Ware, the wife of Kerry Coleman, Clem Long and others, the Rochester Coalition of, for Police Reform and UCLM in considering tools for improving police community relations decided to initially focus on body cameras. We did the research and then went back and had conversations with various members of city council to ascertain their thinking on body cameras. Their main concern focus on the need for police for policies relative to the cameras. We also met with the president of the Police Locust Club, Michael Mazio, and Monroe County Sheriff Patrick O'Flynn. During our research, we discovered that some departments, police departments that is, have policies and some do not. These policies vary across the country. In our own metropolitan area, Gates has body cameras, but has no coherent policies. Greece lacks cogent policies. Without policies, you may as well not have any body cameras. Our team met, and our team consisted of those sitting up front here and others standing behind us. We met and developed written policies and guidelines, which you have on you right now, for this new cutting edge technology. It is not a magic bullet which will resolve conflicts between the police and the public. We view body cameras and police cruiser dash body cameras as significant tools to reshape overall police community relations. The actual goals of the cameras are following. Number one, to reduce crime. Two, reduce excessive use of force by the police. Three, improve police community relations. Four, provide safety for the public as well as the police and to hold the police accountable. Five, cameras provide the opportunity to proceed against officers who perpetrate dehumanizing and racist behaviors as well as excessive force. Six, this is a win for everyone in the city of Rochester. The guidelines which we have developed cover categories from activation to privacy, retention, and civilian oversight as well as others. These policies have been submitted to the mayor's office as well as city council. Each city council member received a copy of these policies. Our task was not only to develop these policies, but to have input into the fashioning of public policy debate on body cameras. We express gratitude to the mayor and city council and the police for their intentions to implement body camera policies. We also thank members of the policy team for their diligence and hard work in developing these policies. Body-worn cameras are part of our community safety agenda, which include one, independent civilian review with subpoena power and investigative authority, two, curtailment of stop and frisk 
That is an end to racial profiling. Three, right to consent to search. Four, anti-racism training for the Rochester Police Department. And five, body-worn cameras and dashboard cameras. Thank you so much. Questions? How did you develop these policies? Kaylin, will you answer that, please? <laughs> sure. Uh, so this is a process that took several months where we reviewed other policies across the U.S. We looked at white papers and guidance from uh, different legal experts on body cameras and took into consideration the unique needs that we have in Rochester and the communities we have here. And then together we came to consensus on these recommendations for body worn camera policy in the city of Rochester. Do you have concern that um, a police officer could wear a camera, but a lot of times when there's an investigation going on, those things don't become public right away. Um, does this address that issue at all? Like the, the actual footage that's captured? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, you know, we know that either city council or Rochester Police Department or both are going to be looking at developing the actual policies that are put into place in Rochester. So these are just recommendations for what we think should be kept in mind. Although we do include uh, a section on, on crime victims and witnesses regarding the privacy, not wanting to uh, interfere with the um, with an open case, for example. So those protections that victims, witnesses, suspects still have in terms of their information being made public would not be necessarily changed by body cameras and there should be a way to redact such information that might violate people's privacy. Reverend Stewart, I guess um, probably sounds like an obvious question, but um, how, how do you see this all? If, if, know if, if police officers are wearing body cameras how will this improve the relationship between citizens and, and the police well from the uh, research uh, that we conducted across the country we found that where body cameras are being used by the police number one it, it did reduce excessive use of force by the police in some areas by 63 percent secondly it also reduced frivolous complaints by the public. Mm -hmm. uh, and number three, the, the fact is we see it as a win-win situation for both sides because when the camera is on, both sides are going to be on their best behavior. And, and so therefore, we certainly need this in the city of Rochester because there have been uh, numerous incidents uh, which have taken place. You remember the last incident with Clem Long, uh, uh, Chief Simonelli, uh, came out and asked if anyone had footage mm. of the incident which had taken place. And then when a young man went to the police department to show that he had video footage of it, then he was attacked uh, and stated that he had redacted the footage that was on the camera. So hopefully with, 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 with body cameras, we're not seeing it as, as a panacea for the whole situation because there are other things involved here too. Uh, you know, you got to have independent civilian review as part of that tool package. You have to have anti-racism training as part of that tool package. So you have to have all these tools in order to have the police to be more accountable to the public that they are supposed to serve. Do you have plans to talk more with the city about these other initiatives you mentioned, um, more independent civilian review? Yes, uh, we do. Um, first of all, what, what, what we want to do is we want to, this is public input, community input into the policies. Now, what we are under, understanding is the fact that the police department is developing policies already. Well, that's for the, from the concern of the police department, and the police department are always going to be about the protection of the police department and what is in the best interest of the police department. This policies, or these set of policies, come from the purview of the community. And we're saying that we need to best represent the interests of the community. How hopeful are you that uh, the city and the police department is receptive to these? Well, we, we, we don't know yet, but uh, we will be finding out, uh, we will be following up uh, with phone calls to the mayor's office and also to city council to ascertain uh, where they are at relative to these policies 
And also, what we're asking for is the fact that, you know, you need citizen input, and here we are, Rochester Coalition for Police Reform uh, 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 and other organizations are willing to sit at the table to help develop the overall policies which are going to come from the city in order to monitor police behavior. You mentioned you looked at how other uh, communities have handled their policies. Can you point to others that have policies similar to what you're proposing? I think we actually have an opportunity to help set model policy if the city were to implement some of the suggestions we make here. Uh, one of the challenges with body cameras, as we acknowledge that this technology may be a win-win for everyone, for the police, for the community, uh, and, and for the city, is that in looking at body camera policies across the U.S., what we found is very few of them actually have any policy at all. And uh, I don't know of another example where they took both the input of the community, which the city has openly solicited and we are glad to respond to, and the interests of the police and, and other interested parties in the city as well. So this is uh, really an opportunity for Rochester to be the model policy for other cities that are looking at these same body cameras. Okay, for question. Yes, I was wondering, have you had or do you intend to have conversation with the police union and do you expect major pushback from them? Well, we've already had uh, about two conversations uh, with uh, Mr. Masio and already, and his main concern uh, was, number one, that he did not want a 24-hour activation policy relative to those cameras. And number two, the concern was privacy issues relative to him because he certainly wants due process for the members of the Locust Club and mm -hmm. to protect his own. We, we understand that. We understand that. And, and, and we are not opposed to that. And so somewhere where we can be in between and work out something that is going to please both the community and the police. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. We appreciate it.